Welcome to Comic Con. How are you? This is Crafty Nathan's Creations here, and I'm here today to show you how to build your very own custom book nook. If you don't know what a book nook is, it's an incredible little thing, a little bit of visual history inside your bookshelf. It's a little world between your books. I have one here that I made recently enough of George in Dublin, but today we're going to be making a Harry Potter themed book nook. In honour of Offaly County Council Libraries, we're going to be showing you a little bit of the magical world of Harry Potter and the library in which it inhabits. It's going to be a great little project. It's going to take very little effort. You can get all this kind of stuff around the house. Maybe you might have to go to the craft store if you want to get more complicated. But I'm going to be showing this project from very, very simple all the way to very, very complicated. So if you just have cardboard and some plastic tubes around your house, perfect. If you have access to giant lasers, also perfect. To start this project, you're going to need the following basic tools. If you don't have them, maybe look around the house. But be very, very careful. We're going to be using craft knives. We're going to be using hot glue. We're going to be using some AC glue or super glue. So make sure, if you don't know how to use these, make sure to ask an adult. You can very, very easily hurt yourself if you're not careful. Let's get straight into it. Foam board and hard canvas panels are some of the best things to use for model making. Now there's so many other ways you can do this. You can use cardboard. The only problem is with cardboard is that it won't last as long. It's gonna break down an awful lot sooner. But if you want an easy project and you wanna pull something together, cardboard will absolutely work. Things can get more exciting and more complicated. An awful lot of people who create book nooks, what they'll use is they use massive lasers. I mean massive lasers. They come in these massive boxes and the machine will basically shoot, cut out a pattern that you design on a computer. We do this an awful lot in different workshops around the country and you can create incredible things. But we're not gonna be doing that today. We're gonna to use a happy medium, which is the canvas boards. You can pick these up in any art supply store. They're super cheap, they're super affordable, and they've got a good bit of rigidity, strength. They're not going to break and you'll be able to hold on to them for quite a long time. So if you only have cardboard, use that. It's, it, it'll work perfect. But if you can, try this rigid hardboard. It works amazingly. Secondly, you've got your foam board. Foam board is brilliant. It's great for all sort of model making and I absolutely endorse it. Go get some, you'll find it in any sort of art supply store. Just go in, ask for foam board and they'll direct it to you. Maybe get a few different sizes. It's very, very affordable and it works brilliantly for all model making. You will need the following. The first step in our book nook is to plan it out and make sure it's all to scale. We want a good plan to work from. So our end dimensions, if we want to make this, is 26 centimeters tall, 12.4 centimeters wide, and then for deepness is 22 centimeters. And let's get all this cut out now from our hardboard and we'll get stuck into it. Make sure to use a fresh blade on your craft knife. Then draw your dimensions out on your hard or canvas board and start cutting it out using multiple cuts to get through. When you're doing cuts like this, it's always very important to go slowly and be very, very careful with the blade. These blades can really, really hurt you. This type here, not very much as bad as a scalpel blade. You can really do some damage with yourself. So, if you don't feel confident with an adult nearby, ask them. But always take it very, very slow. You don't want to rush this. That's how you get bad edges and bad things. But now I have a very crisp, clean edge that'll take paint really, really well. Otherwise, you might get rough surface and we don't want that. Take your time and get the full structure of the box cut out. Now that we have all our parts cut off, we're gonna to have to start attaching the box together. Now we're gonna put this together in two separate halves so we can work on the inside before we join the whole thing together. We're gonna to use two things to do this. Hot glue, which is brilliant, but you need to be very, very careful around it because it will burn you if you're not careful. And super glue. 
great stuff. Just make sure you don't, as I do all the time, glue my fingers together. It's absolutely brilliant. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a line of glue down and then we're gonna top it up with a bit of strong hot glue. And that should hold these pieces together while we work on the bookshelves. Start off with some super glue to get a real strong bond between the two pieces of canvas board. Just make sure to line it up perfectly. You usually only get one chance at this. Hot glue can reach over 100 degrees, so it can be pretty dangerous, but it'll give you the best hold on anything you put it on. I decided to attach a button on the back of the piece. This is a simple button I picked up in a local electronic supply store. You can do this and it'll make your job so much easier. Using a drill first, I widened it with a set of files and then added it and secured it with some hot glue. Now for a little test fit, just to make sure that everything is lining up perfectly. Now that we have our box ready, we're going to need to set up the partition where we're going to have our glass and our windows. I cut this out of foam board. After taking all the measurements, I slowly started to cut out all the little windows. This took quite a while and is a very fiddly job. I added a small lip with a bit of foam board and some plastic card to show the depth and the movement in the rock. Next up, I wanted to add an awful lot more details. So using some barbecue sticks, we put them in all over, then added the little window frames. This really made it pop. Since we're going for a snow theme of Hogwarts, I added little ledges that we can add snow on later. Concrete paint can be bought in most craft stores. It gives the look of concrete and stone on any material. It takes quite a while to put on, but it's cheap and an incredible way to make something look top notch. Now that we have our back piece in, what we'll do later on is we might add a couple of LEDs on the backlight. So we'll have our little switch here, and then we'll have our LEDs, and we can just turn it on right back here, and you'll see everything shining in. We might even throw a couple more LEDs. Next thing we need to do, though, is we need to start adding the structural sections for the bookcases. And what I'm going to use on that is, I'm going to use much thinner three millimeter foam board. I'm going to build them up all the way up around here, and then we're also going to build on the other side as well. So when fully finished, the whole thing will just join together. Once we have them up, then it's time for books. So let's get started on putting together the bookshelves now. I cut the bookshelves out of foam board and then assembled them with hot glue. I didn't want to be too accurate in my measurements here. I wanted that kind of wonky look to it so the bookcases looked aged. That's one done. Now on to the other one. You can experiment here with different shapes or sizes or do any sort of bookcase you want. Remember, when you're working on builds like this, there's no hard and fast rules. It's all about your imagination going wild and building something that you love and makes you feel good. So just experiment, go wild. I then rounded the edges on some hardboard and made little fullers for both sets of bookcases. This just made it a little bit easier to put in and really finished off the look. I added some matchsticks just to give it that little bit more detail. As you're working on any project, always make sure you test fit and you know exactly where everything's gonna go. Taking my lollipop sticks and the measurements I'd already made, I slowly started to add the floor, a little piece at a time, making sure to keep everything straight by sanding it every so softly with a hand file. It was very simple, it just took quite a while. I then gave the whole thing a sand on top, just to make sure it was all flat and even. Then, I added little tables to the bookshelves.
To add even more detail, I took some barbecue sticks and stuck them in as little brass poles holding everything up. I made these little lamps out of barbecue sticks and rolled up pieces of paper. Super easy and they look unreal. Now that we've built most of the structure, we need to lay down our first bit of paint. And you can do this in lots of different ways. You could spray paint it, you could airbrush it. But today I'm gonna to use the simplest way is some acrylic paint. I'm gonna paint the whole thing black. And once we have it all black, then we'll go back again and we'll start adding more detailed colors. I like to use an airbrush, but if you don't have an airbrush, it's totally fine. We'll also be using some craft paints and parts, but some places I, I just like to use my airbrush. It'll always take a few coats of any color to really get a decent coat. So take your time and apply multiple coats. I then used a little bit of tissue paper to give that worn look on the floor. Then brass paint right on to the barbecue sticks to give that brass effect. If this was real world, it would be incredibly dry. It's gonna need something to really make it pop. Now that we've finished painting our bookcases, the next step is to give them a nice shine. You can use PVA glue, or you can use spray paint, or in my case, I'm gonna be using varnish through an airbrush. All the different ways have a little bit of ups and downs. Do whatever suits you. Generally, I would use a spray can, spray can, but I don't have one at the moment, so I'm going to use a spray on varnish. An airbrush is an incredible instrument. If you're a big time crafter, eventually you might find the need for an airbrush. It uses compressed air and a very narrow nozzle to vaporize the paint and then put it onto a target. You can get great fades, great designs. It's an incredible piece of kit. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. I didn't have one for years when I started, but once I got one, I never went back. It's an incredible tool. Remember, if you are using an airbrush, always wear a mask. I forgot mine here, but I remembered it later on. Now that the varnish is drying on our bookshelves, we're gonna work on our back wall and our stone windows. The concrete paint has come up amazing. And you can paint this with any sort of paint, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an airbrush because I want to get that rich stone, kind of that sandstone Hogwarts feel. You can use this with acrylic paint, you can use this with oil paints, really it's whatever suits you. Airbrush just happens to be my favourite way of painting these things. So I'm going to load up the airbrush and we're going to watch me paint it. For airbrush paint, I use the Vallejo range of paints. They do a great selection and really add good contrast. When you're painting something, sometimes it's really, really helpful to try and highlight the raised areas. So you see here, I've put down a base coat of sand and then I've highlighted all the parts that are sticking out because otherwise it would look very, very flat to your eyes. Whereas now you're drawn to it. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some much darker color and we're gonna put it in the recesses to show the depth. If you look at anything, especially when it's painted, there'll be dark areas and light areas. If you just put one color down it all just looks uniform and you lose that depth. And in model making, that's so, so important. So let's get on the airbrush and let's put in a little bit of depth. And now, after a little bit of painting and a little bit of highlighting, we have a beautiful sandstone finish. It's gonna look perfect for Hogwarts. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the cross sections in and then put in the acetate, finish off this section. We won't be putting it in though, because we still have to do the wiring at the end. So let's get this bit finished up. To add to our windows, I also want to add a little bit of snow. Now, to make snow, it's very, very simple. Combine a bit of PVA glue with some bread or baking soda. Add a two to one, lots and lots of glue, little bit of baking soda. Make it into a nice fine paste and then lay it out. You're going to need to give it plenty of time to dry. This stuff will take a while, but it'll last forever and gives a great snowy effect. Now let's lay the snow on our little lip that we made here just for this purpose. So we take a little bit and just dab it on. 
this is, seems very very wet but it'll dry much smoother and it'll give a lovely snow effect now it's time to make the books i found everything i needed on harrypottertumblr.com it was an incredible place to go next up we're going to cut out all our little book books to give that aged effect i mixed up some coffee and tea and then dipped everything in one by one this gave a great aged feel to the look of things to assemble the books, I made mine in batches, gluing them onto foam board and then cutting them out. I had to make a couple of hundred books, so this was a very, very quick way of doing so. It'll take you quite a while, but just take your time, and it's actually a pretty therapeutic process. It took me about three hours to assemble the first bookshelf. Add in each book piece by piece with a little bit of glue and it'll look amazing. Then a little bit of the coffee mixture and add it on top of the books. This gives that aged effect in places that you wouldn't normally see it. And remember, all these props were freely available online. All I had to do was download them, put them onto Word and then print them on my normal household printer. The second bookshelf took about three hours as well. There was hundreds of books and I had to put them each in place. It was really, really time consuming, but it's come out looking amazing. I gave the whole piece a coat of fiery red. I probably could have gone with a darker color, but this is a paint I had on hand. and was cheap and easy to do. I printed out this picture of Hogwarts and stuck it on the back, added in my LEDs, and then test fitted the little partition. This gave it real depth when we assembled it. Make sure you to use plenty of hot glue. You want a really strong bond here. Now, to light this project, I did an awful lot of wiring. I wired up some LED strips and two little white LED bulbs. Now that can be pretty complicated for an awful lot of people. There's the soldering involved, there's an awful lot of climps, crimps. You also have to put in your little button and all that can be quite difficult. So one way around that, if you're doing this and you're just getting started, is you can pick up little light sets, very, very cheap, in deals or any little pound store, or euro store you can get your hands on. And these are great. You can just put them in, there's a little button, you put in a couple of batteries and you just turn it on. You can run that to the back there and just have a little place where you can switch it on and it'll be perfect. When it comes to wiring, really, there's so many different ideas. I've messed around with a couple of ideas with an Arduino. I have a couple of other ideas that I might do in the future on this project, but really take it at your own pace. This project has been an absolutely incredible build. I've loved working on it and it's been such a joy to be part of it. When you're working on any diorama such as this or a book nook or any sort of model making, the most important thing is planning it out. Make sure your scale is right. Scale is so important for builds like this. If you don't have the scale right, your brain has an incredible ability to spot models that don't seem right. You won't understand it, but your subconscious brain will look at it and go, that's not right. And you'll feel revolted looking at it. It's actually an incredible scientific phenomenon. You won't know why you don't like it. You just know you don't. So some of the most incredible models you've ever seen in your life, you, some people look at them and go, no, that's, that's, I don't like that. And it, it, it's really, really a fascinating little, uh, little tidbit. So when you're working on little things like this, you gotta make sure that all your little details all match up. And this has been an absolutely terrific project. Thank you so much for following along. There's probably gonna be a bit of a Q and A, um, maybe not just after this video, but in the near future. So if you have any questions, then hit me up. Guys, thank you so much and happy making.